Hello and welcome back. So when we left off in the short, and if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link below. When we left off in the short, we were talking about WordPress scripts, WordPress environment, and how if you're a WordPress and plugin developer, WordPress scripts can make your life a lot easier for maintaining those things. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to start from scratch, get WordPress ENV, WordPress scripts up and running. So let's get started. So before you do anything, you need to know that you need to have Docker installed and you need to have Node installed. I have version 20 running. If you have the same version or higher, you'll be fine. Just make sure that you have at least Node 20 up and running. All right, let's get our project file started. And let's install WordPress ENV. All right, so now we're gonna jump into our package JSON and we're just gonna put a couple of commands under our scripts parameter here. First, we'll start with ENV start appropriately, and we'll just put WP ENV start. We'll also put in a stop command. So we're able to stop it when we need to. Now let's give that a test. This might take a little bit, but I'll fast forward to the part where it's up and running. You will see this message down here that says it doesn't have a WP ENV JSON. Uh, we will create that, but not yet. We'll just go with the defaults just to make sure this is working. All right, and it looks like we're done. So let's go over to this URL and make sure that WordPress is up and running. And there it is. Great, let's try to stop it now just to make sure that command works. This will just take a second. All right, now it's stopped and let's refresh this. And of course the site can't be reached. So now we know we have an environment that we can control using NPM and it will start and stop when we want it to. Now let's create our custom theme directory and we will create a WP ENV JSON file where we can map our theme into our environment. Okay, so let's create the file here. We'll just do it manually. So this is a JSON file and it will have a couple of keys that we care about. The first is themes, and this is an array of theme mappings. Let's leave that empty for now. And speaking of mappings, the next one is mappings. And this one is an object. And what we'll do is we'll map the internal map to the local map. And what that means is we'll have inside the WP content folder where the themes would go, We'll point it to our custom theme here. And then I'm just going to put the directory under themes, custom theme locally. And then up here, we will also put themes, custom theme. Save that. Oh, and we don't want to forget this. All right, so now let's create our folder under themes, custom theme, and we can create our first file. Let's just create our footer. Let's create our header. Let's create our index file. We'll create our style file. And finally, we'll create our functions file. Now let's go through each of these and fill it out. Now I kind of already have this filled out elsewhere, so I'm just gonna paste it in. But if you want, you could pause here and kind of follow along. So what we have here are the language attributes. We have the WP head so that any scripts we inject in will get outputted here. We have the skip to content link that helps with screen reader. And then we have our site content down here, which will wrap all of our site content. Let's save that. Let's jump into footer. All right, likewise, I have this ready to go. So I'm just gonna paste it in, but this just ends the content and page we started in the header. All right, next we're going to populate the index file. And this is going to wrap all our content. It will get our header, it will get our footer, and we are going to bring in a heading of custom theme and just a simple div that has nothing in it yet. We'll be using this later on. For now, it's just gonna give us an ID. Um, this is actually gonna show up as empty. That's fine. We just want this to be up and running, right? So let's get that in there. And let's just, when this is up and running, we'll know because we're gonna make the background of our body black. Okay, so let's start up our environment again. I think our path is correct. Yes, it is. So let's start. All right, so that is done now. Let's refresh. There we go. Okay, so you'll notice that our theme isn't set right now. We can log in. The default password or username and password are gonna be admin, password, and we can go into our themes under appearance and activate our custom theme. All right, so here we go. That's our custom theme. Our div is there, you can't see it, but we have our CSS file here. So the next thing we're gonna do is get WP scripts up and running. So 
let's do that next. So let's install our dependency here. Um, uppercase D is just saying that it's going to be a dev dependency, but we could also do this and we will do WordPress scripts. Okay, now that we have that going, we can create our assets folder. And this is where all our JavaScript, CSS, TypeScript, if you want, SCSS, all that stuff is gonna live. And it's going to have a source folder and it'll have a build folder. Our source folder is where we'll put all our code. And then the build folder is what will get referenced when this gets deployed anywhere or published or anything like that. So let's get that going. We'll make assets and then we will make main and we'll just use JavaScript for this. Um, you could make this a TypeScript file that would work just fine. Um, and let's do main CSS for now. Again, we can improve that later, but we just want to show that this will be up and running. And to that end, we will, let's just do an alert when this loads. Okay, now that we have this, we're going to go in here and create some additional scripts. The first one will be, let's do assets build. Instead of WPENV, we'll use scripts and we will point to our custom file here. So we'll just use the relative path. Themes, custom theme, assets, main. All right, and then we will make a custom output path because otherwise it's gonna put it in this root directory. And we will put that in themes, custom theme, assets, build. I just realized I didn't put this in a source directory, so let's do that. We'll just move all our existing stuff into there from assets, put it into source. Okay, so now we'll have a build and we'll have a source, like I said. So let's just give that a try. Script name is missing. Oh, I forgot to actually put the build command in here. So let's save that and try again. Okay, and it also doesn't like that I put the extension here. So let's not do that and try again. All right, and I also forgot to put the source in there. Let's try again. Okay, I see what the problem is. I've put the assets folder under source. It should be the other way around. So let's do that really quick. I'll make the assets folder. I'll make the source folder. Let's just take these files, drag them into there and get rid of this one and this one. Okay, so now we have assets source. And again, let's put our body command in here so we get our background since we won't be using the main style file. That's really how we'll just define our theme. Uh, here, let's give it a blue background and give it a white color for the, the text. And let's try one more time. Okay, there you go. Now, when we open up our assets folder, we have build and we have source. Here you see we have main.js. We don't yet have our CSS being transpiled, but if we look in here, we see we have our alert. So let's also bring in our CSS. And the way we do that is by importing it here. So we will import it just like this and we will rerun our build. Okay, so now you see it's being brought into the build. You also will see if I open up this asset file, right now you don't see any dependencies in here, but this is where some of the magic of our scripts will work. But for now, let's just try and get this loaded. So the next thing we need to do is hop into functions.php. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do in functions.php is add our line for PHP. Then we're going to add an init command here and inside this init command. So this is a callback from WordPress. And what we're doing is just establishing our, our base asset URL and our base asset dir or directory. After that, we're going to scan for any of these asset files. You could have multiple. So we're going to look for all of them with the glob function. We will then loop through those files in this loop, then we will require this asset file. Notice when we look at it, I'll show you that in a minute, it is in the form of a PHP file, and that gives us access to the array contained inside this variable. Next, we're gonna pull out the base name of the asset file, so we can point to the file name. We will then get the actual name of the file that gets pulled in, um, aside from asset, so we get the slug of the file, and we're gonna put that into a variable. We call that the handle. We'll prefix it with the name of our theme, so it's easy to enqueue. Next, we'll build our style sheet path and URL using the asset directory with the asset slug and the asset URL with the asset slug. And then we will register our style if it's there. So it is readable. First checks to see if it's there, then does a registration. We register it because we don't necessarily want it enqueued. You can enqueue things in different areas depending on the conditions. Same thing with the JavaScript. 
we want to make sure that the JavaScript exists before we try to enqueue it. And there you go. That should register everything. The next thing we'll do is actually enqueue it. Okay, so to enqueue it, we'll make a callback for WP enqueue scripts with a function. And in here, what we're going to do is enqueue our script, which will have the custom theme prefix. And it will be main, since that's the name of the file here. We'll do the same thing with the style. And let's save that and see what we get. All right, our JavaScript loaded. And now we have a blue background with a white font. Off to a good start. Let's take a look at the source here. So in our source, we have main.js. We also have main CSS being loaded in. Notice that it has a version at the end of it too. This helps to break the cache. So browsers will cache file names so that they don't have to reload them time after time. But if there are changes, the browser should know about it. And that's what this version token does. This is automatically generated as part of the asset file. Notice these match. And that is on purpose. That's by design. Every time I make a change and do a build, those changes will show up immediately. Okay, so now let's do a little bit more. So we're gonna keep our import of main CSS, but let's do an import of a JavaScript file. Okay, so WordPress has a number of things that you can import from WP scripts. The first one we're gonna try out is DOM ready. And this gives us a way to easily load things when the DOM is ready to receive them. So again, we'll do an alert when the DOM is ready. We'll save this, we'll do another build, and we'll refresh. And we see one. The key thing here is we didn't have to load this manually. It's automatically enqueued, and it's now in our asset file here as a dependency. And now we have a new version that got loaded in, and we saw our changes immediately. Now let's do things a little bit differently. Let's change our main CSS file into an SCSS file. Okay, we renamed our import. Let's rename our file. Let's come in here. Let's point to our H1 here. And let's give it a different color. We'll give it a yellow. Let's do our build, refresh. We still get our alert. I should get rid of that. And notice that it's yellow now. And I'm already using SCSS. These things are built in out of the box. Easy, super easy to use. Let's get rid of that alert. All right, now let's turn this into a React app. Sounds super difficult, not difficult at all. So what I'm gonna do is import the create root function from the WordPress element package. From WordPress element. Okay. Now I'm going to get the element I create on our index.php file, which is called test. You can change that to whatever you want. Put that into a const app equals document, get element by ID test. Next. Well, first let's see if we actually get a reference to this thing. App, app. Let's run our build. Should run the hot reloader pretty quick, but first we'll do it this way. Look in our console and there it is. Great. Okay, so now that we know that's running, let's create our root. Um, create root app. Okay, now that we have our root created, we need, an, we need a component to attach to it. So let's create a component really quick. Just something super simple that says React is here. React is here. Okay, now we're going to render our app. Let's do a build. And there you go. React is super easy to import in this environment. You also have React itself available if you wanna do it that way. Let's say you wanted to import create root from React itself, that's also available. Client, let's do a build. And there you go, it works just the same. Now let's put in hot reloading. And to do that, first we'll put in a regular watcher. We'll call it asset start. Actually, let's copy our command here because it's gonna be largely the same. And we'll call this start. 
point it to the same area. Now let's make one that's called start hot. And the only difference there is we're going to give it the hot command. Let's save that. Let's first start our watcher. Let's see how that works. Okay, I refresh over here. I still have my React app. Let's add some exclamations. It recompiled immediately. Now all I have to do is refresh to have that show up. Okay, great. Now what if I don't want to refresh to see my changes? Well, let's try out our hot reloader. Okay, we got stuff running there. Let's refresh one more time. Let's make some changes. There we go. We see our exclamation points. Let's change the color of the page. Boom, done. All right. So let's talk about what we have so far. We have a theme running on WP ENV in our browser based on Docker. All we have to do is mount the theme folder. We have SCSS being transpiled. We have JavaScript bringing in dependencies automatically. We have React loading. We have SCSS. It really is incredible what you can do with just a little bit of magic. All right, let's try adding Tailwind to our CSS. So I think what you have to do is add the dependency for Tailwind. Let me look that up really quick. Okay, so it looks like we can just run npm install Tailwind CSS. All right, that went well. Next, we're going to init our Tailwind config. So for that, we're going to run npx Tailwind CSS init. And there we go. Now to get that going, we will just point our content at all our theme stuff. Okay. And that's going to be under themes, custom theme assets. Now we don't want it to look in our build folder because that's going to get out of control pretty quickly. But if we have it looking inside our source folder, we can have it looking at all our JavaScript files. Now, if you also had TypeScript in here, you might want to add a line for TypeScript as well. TypeScript, TSX, but if you just want it looking at JavaScript, that's fine. You could also point it at your PHP files if you want to reference Tailwind from those. Those will get included. Now, the next thing we need to do in order to make the magic of Tailwind work is bring it in. To do that, we need to reference Tailwind base, Tailwind components, and Tailwind utilities. Let's see if it's running. Okay, let us give it a try. Okay, that's not quite working yet. Let's see here, your Tailwind. Ah, I know what I forgot. One thing you need to do to connect the magic of Tailwind to everything else is set up post CSS. So let's do that really quick. Okay, created the file. Now I'm just gonna paste this in. You can pause and add that in here, but this is all it is. Let's save that and rerun our hot reloader. Refresh. Ooh, we saw things refreshed and all the default style for the browser went away. Now let's get rid of these styles here. And, oh, well, I didn't actually reference a valid style here. Oh, there we go. Now we see everything is kind of working the way it should. Um, we can set a background on this guy. So let's do background, I don't know, uh, black. Let's set the height of the body and the HTML and the root to 100%. And close this out, get rid of that. And let's come in here and let's use some apply commands. So let's do background black. We'll do text white and we'll do full height from here and get rid of this guy. Very nice. And that's pretty much it. Now you can imagine how powerful this is for things like theme and plugin development and not having to do all the boilerplate of setting up Gulp, Webpack, that kind of thing. That being said, you can customize your Webpack configuration if you needed multiple entry points, um, if you need multiple CSS points, all that's doable. And like you saw in the short, you can support TypeScript in here. It's fully TypeScript compliant out of the box, super simple to set up. Maybe we can dive into that at some point. But for now, that's it. I'll leave you with that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, but otherwise, see you next time. Thank you.